What's the word, y'all? NBA All-Star Weekend was a dud. I think that's I think that's two years in a row, y'all, where it was a complete, complete dud. And it's somewhat of a consensus. If you look on the internet, a lot of people didn't really enjoy it. And, and part of this video is me trying to figure out, should I care? Does, does it matter that All-Star Weekend isn't fun or competitive or all of these other things? Does, should it really matter? I don't know. But we're going to talk about some of the things that weren't as great from the perspective as A, a diehard NBA fan, and B, somebody that was in the arena for most of the events. Uh, but 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 lock in. Let me know what you think. I want to give the credit where it's due because it wasn't void of fun. Like there are there are a decent amount of events that were really cool. I really do like the skills competition, the way they formatted it over the last 30 years to where we got to this point. One of the smartest things Adam Silver and company has done is make it so that one of the teams that is participating is the hometown team because the uh, the arena was electric when the Pacers was doing the skills competition. So I thought that was an absolute win. The three point shootout was as competitive as we've seen it. We hell we saw a four way tie in the first round to get to the second round and then the Sabrina versus Steph Curry thing was as fun of a one-off event as we've had in a while even if the commentary around it wasn't necessarily great as somebody that was in the arena and then watched it back on TV it was super super fun to see two of the best shooters on this planet go head to head that's kind of it those three things that I just mentioned being super fun at least the Steph Curry and Sabrina thing is something that I mean hell bring it bring it back <laughs> Caitlin Clark is gonna be in the league next season I, I kind of like the idea of having Steph versus Sabrina and Dane versus Caitlyn on a two on two three point shootout, whatever. Um, but the other things, the staple things, the the skills competition, three point shootout, that's those aren't the main attractions. People come to Sunday night or Saturday night to watch the dunk contest, and people come to Sunday to to see the game. And the dunk contest was me. It was shout out to Mac McClung. He put together some really solid dunks. Shout out to uh, Jacob Toppin who got robbed. And and one of the dunks he did was ridiculous. And the the, the way the arena again, I'm in this arena. They reacted to this dunk as if it was like a yawn fest. Like that was. A ridiculous dunk. And the conversation is always going to be, oh, we got spoiled by Aaron Gordon. We got spoiled by Zach Levine back in 2016. The other conversation is going to be like, well, this is what we get when we don't get the big names. And personally, I don't I don't feel that way. Like, for sure, we'd love to have a John Moran. For sure, we would love to have Zion Williamson for at least two years. I don't know if Zion is putting on a crazy show nowadays. But I'm like looking around the association about the big names that should participate. How many people in a 2024 All-Star game do you actually want to see in a dunk contest that you think you put on some ridiculous dunks to make us satisfied? I don't think it's that many people. Looking at the rosters, um, Donovan Mitchell performed in it a few years back. I don't know if you remember that. And then the only guy on these two rosters that I'm looking at, like, oh, that would be cool to have him in a dunk contest, is Anthony Edwards. So you talk about the big names. What names are you talking about? You want to bring Zach Levine back? If you watch any Bulls games over the last two seasons, you know he's not dunking like he was in 2016. So I don't think it's a lot of, oh my God, the top players don't want to do it. Man, we've been doing the dunk contest since 1976. 1976 is almost 50 years ago. I feel like we've exhausted 99.9% .9 of dunks. And that's why we get to the point where it's a lot, a lot of showmanship. We saw a few years back, Timberlands, Duncan and Tims, the NFT dunk, dunking over a plane is what John Collins did. Like, it's a lot of showmanship. This year, we saw Jalen Brown be the first all-star to appear in a dunk contest in like five years. His dunks were trash, but I commend him for being one of the top guys to go in but even his dunks weren't about the finish it was about oh my god i got this dominique wilkins look-alike person that's teaching me how to do dominique wilkins dunk we seen dominique wilkins dunk 40 years ago but it's the showmanship kai sinet just won stream of the year for the second year running he's one of the most popular people in social media right now let's dunk over him but make sure he's sitting in the chair first like it's the showmanship more than the actual dunking and in our best years oh man went a lot of showmanship with Aaron Gordon and Zach Levine was doing a thing like yeah they had the little hoverboards because those was those was popping off back then but other than that it was like I'm dunking from the from the free throw line going between my legs so I'm doing the windmill it was strictly based on the bunnies and it was strictly based on the dunk and I think at this point in time how creative can you really get without you being a professional dunk is there are people on this earth that I know 100% can dominate this and put it together to some crazy, crazy dunks. But they're not NBA players. When Jalen Brown or, or Jacob Toppin or Jaime Jaquez are working on their game every single day or Mac McClung, they're not necessarily throwing down uh, dunk contest quality dunks in a normal day. They are trying to hone in on their craft to get an NBA roster, keep an NBA roster spot, or go to the next level. 
Dunking is just a very, very small fraction of what they do on a nightly basis or on a, on a workout basis. So I can't really expect them to come to here and be like, oh my God, nobody has done a, a 1060 between the legs cartwheel dunk. But that fictional dunk that I just talked about, the, the dunk cartwheel dunk, it might be a professional dunker that, that do that. But do the NBA want to, like, you know what I'm saying? The NBA felt some type of way of putting Mac McClung out there and he's a part of the NBA network like he's not an NBA player right now but he was a part of the NBA network and they're like I don't know man <laughs> I don't know about that guy and if it wasn't for that guy Utah would have been a zero out of ten so what is the solution to the dunk contest I don't I, I do not have it uh, I was on Stephen A. Smith's podcast uh, over All-Star Weekend and his solution was you you take those best dunkers in the world that aren't NBA players the professional dunkers and you bring them to All-Star Weekend and have them be coached slash sponsored by a real NBA player. So now LeBron James is a part of the dunk contest without being a part of the dunk contest. Mic up Bron and, and talk about stuff, whatever, whatever. And I don't hate the idea, but it, it just it goes too far away to what we have right now. And it seems like a lot of the things that are incorporated in sports in general, it's a gradual incorporation instead of being like, hey, we're going to change the entire format right here, right now. So I like the idea. I think it's too far left for Adam Silver to be like, yes. And you get to the actual game. Now, Adam Silver last year, um, he said very publicly that he wasn't a fan of the way Utah was. Um, zero defense, this and that. Didn't feel like an all-star game. It felt like something else. So he said, hey, I'm going to get rid of the draft aspect. I'm, I'm going to get rid of the Elam ending. We're going to play straight up East versus West. And, and because of the pride aspect of putting on from not just your city, but this entire part of the association, that might be enough for the players to really, really care. And it was. Actually, we saw the most points ever scored <laughs> tonight. And you can tell immediately that Adam Silver was not happy. And to the Eastern Conference All-Stars, you scored the most points. Well, congratulations. You scored the most points. Well, <laughs> well, I just, uh, he, he hates it. And a lot of fans hate it too. And listen, I'm not here to be the fun police. If you enjoyed tonight, that is completely cool. At the end of the day, this is the best talent of basketball that we have in our association, playing on the same court. Even if it is high scoring and no defense and just three point shots. If you enjoyed it, that is completely okay. I am not in the group of people that enjoyed it. I'm not. Um, and, and this is kind of the way All-Star goes, right? We go through these waves. We'll have two really, really great years back to back. And we'll have four that are like, oh, do we need to change something? And this is one of the do we need to change something uh, years. And back to my, well, the first thing I said in this video, does it even does it even matter? Is it just cool to see Luka and, and Nikola Jokic on the same court together? playing together, even though they both really don't care. Like, is it even a problem? And if it is a problem, we need to find some type of solutions to make it better. Um, I, I am completely okay if the first three quarters are super high scoring from both squads, but what I want as a fan is to see the fourth quarter be more competitive. I am not advocating for Kawhi Leonard to get in his stance like his DPOY years. I'm not advocating for Anthony Davis to protect the paint like he does in a regular season. All I kind of want is C minus defense. C minus. How about how about we contest Damian Little shot and don't and not allow him to get up 33 pointers in a game? How about instead of letting Car Anthony Towns walk to the basket, we just just get in front of him a little bit? You know? C minus defense would change this whole game. But I don't blame, blame the players for not wanting to do that because this is an exhibition game. In Indiana right now, I am on the brink of eight, my first vacation of, of the year. I'm not trying to mess up my ankle. I'm not trying to do something tonight that would jeopardize my team's real NBA season. I understand that. But we also have had years where we see those dudes play hard. Kimba Walker is the prime example of this. In 2020, Kimba Walker played like every single minute of the fourth quarter of the game that was the Elim ending game, right? And if I'm not mistaken, this was the very first year of the Elim ending. In my mind, that was about to stick because it went very well. Now, I did end, I think, on some free throws from Anthony Davis. But regardless, for the last quarter, 
everybody was completely locked in. So here's the box score. It ended up being 157 to 150, uh, 157 to 155. Again, really, really good all-star game. Kawhi dropped 30. Chris Paul, my goat, had 20, 23. Kemba, like I mentioned, played 30 minutes. And then for the rest of the season, I don't know if y'all remember this. That game was on February 16th. So right here, he missed every he missed five games coming out the break and then was out of the lineup. And then we get to the playoffs and he got back on track. But like he, he was uh on the slum one of a minutes restriction, so on and so forth. But in that game, Kyle Lowry took like three charges. Like they cared. They cared about that game. So I was just confused that the Elam ending didn't come back. So I've seen a lot of people suggest over Twitter in the last couple of hours since it ended, what can we do? One of it was like, hey, we saw all these people care about the NCAA tournament once we taxed a half a million dollars to every single player. Yeah, but they're already playing for charity. What what would that look like to be like, yeah, I don't care about the girls and boys club of, of Indianapolis, but I, I get in my stance for myself. Like that, that would just look kind of weird. Some people suggest it that we no longer do East versus West, but we kind of tackle it the way we do the skills challenge where it's like a multiple different teams, they go against each other. And then, oh, I'm sorry, the Rise of Stars challenge is multiple different teams that go against each other. Then we see two teams being the finals. I don't hate that idea, but again, it still goes down to the fact that like, why should LeBron care, you know? And this is, it's the I think what makes it so much more difficult is that the, the, the NBA All-Star Weekend was the gold standard. Like I can't even go to any other sport and be like, oh, they do it like this. So let's kind of steal what they doing. Uh, football turn their Pro Bowl to flag football. Baseball, don't get me started. So like the NBA has always been the gold standard. And now we're kind of, we're, we've been seeing it go down for the last couple of years. So I don't even have a frame of reference of what to do or what we can. I know something we could do on Saturday night that would be cool. That is that one-on-one -on -one tournament everybody's been asking for for the last decade. Uh, I got to interview Jason Tatum. Uh, it's a good segue, Kenny. Uh, and that link should be in the description. And one of the last things I asked him was about a one-on-one -on -one tournament. I asked him who would win a one-on-one -on -one tournament. He thought, if we're going to do it, we got to break it up to three categories of guard, wings, and a bigs. I think that's pretty smart. And he said that if it were to happen, he would participate. Like that idea. How many other superstars would say they would participate? Maybe this is the next thing to be added to Saturday. I don't know. Let me, let me know what you think. I do believe there were very interesting moments. Um, someone actually suggested in my, in my, my tweet that maybe it's okay if the basketball isn't good if we saw more of the personalities, right? I know we have moments where people are mic'd up, they do some interviews and stuff, but maybe that's just not enough. Enough. Maybe maybe a, a, a alt cast of Draymond Green, Taylor Rooks, and Charles Barkley is cool, but that's not enough. Maybe we mic up more of the players. Maybe we really go in on the fun aspect of it. But then again, that only benefits the people at home and not the people in the arena. And the people in the arena are typically the people paying thousands of dollars. So I don't, I don't really know how we do it. I don't hate that idea, though. Show the personalities a little bit more. Um, but you let me know what you think.